If you're trying to learn JavaScript or React, there are hundreds of courses online that you could take. However, how do you actually know which courses are good and which ones you're actually gonna learn best with? In this video, I'm gonna break down my favorite text-based and video-based courses for JavaScript and React that I think you should take. So let's start with text-based courses. And no surprise, the first one on my list and the one that I'm currently working through is the Odin Project. I think the Odin Project is great, first and foremost, because it's free, but also it does a really good job of guiding you step-by-step, step, not only through JavaScript, but also through HTML, CSS, back-end, and even frameworks like React. On top of this, it actually forces you to set up everything locally on your computer. So you're not using a web-based editor that a lot of these companies make, and you're actually getting the full experience of coding on your own machine. This is a nuanced detail, but I think it will help a lot down the line when you're actually working on your own projects and you need to start them from scratch. It's really useful to know how to set up your own environment so that you can actually have code that you can push to production and ultimately put out there for others to use and see. Even though I love the Odin project, there are some cons that make it a little bit difficult. The the first big one that you'll probably see online is that it's completely text-based. It does link to other articles or videos from time to time when it's going through the motions of explaining something, but by and large, it's mostly a text-based application and there is a lot of reading. They try to do a good job of mixing things up by linking to different articles and sometimes even videos when they're explaining a topic, but by and large, you're getting a large text-based tutorial and you really have to go through article after article to learn the different concepts. If this is not the way that you learn, then the Odin Project may not be the best resource Resource for you or it may not be the only resource that you want to rely on but it is a lot of reading the other thing that might be difficult with the Odin project is that the exercises can be hard and you may have to join the community to actually learn more if you get stuck there are some video resources out there where you can type into YouTube about doing a specific part of the Odin project but if you get stuck you really have to plug into the community and apply yourself and that's how you're gonna get through and find the right answer for what you're doing this is not necessarily a bad thing but just something that you should keep in mind because sometimes it's gonna take a little bit more discipline on your own end to actually get through this course. The second text-based course that I'm gonna talk about is Free Code Camp, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the Odin Project. If you're looking for text-based coding courses, these two are the creme de la creme and really stand out from everything else. The good things about Free Code Camp are that it is also free and that there are a lot of different tracks that you can actually choose from depending on what your interests are. I know in this video I'm talking about JavaScript and React, but if you're interested in backend frameworks or other concepts in programming, there's probably a Free Code Camp track out there for you. And that gives you a lot of flexibility to not not only learn JavaScript or React, but also add on additional resources and tools that you can put into your toolkit as you're becoming a programmer. The one thing that separates the Odin project from Free Code Camp, in my opinion, is the fact that Free Code Camp actually uses a built-in editor online for you to practice their coding exercises. Like I said earlier, I highly prefer the Odin project's methodology in this to force you to set up your own local environment, even though that takes a little bit more effort in the beginning as you're getting ready to code and get set up. Having an online editor like Free Code Camp does is useful when you want to just hit the ground running and start learning concepts but down the line when you actually want to use those concepts to apply to your own projects getting set up with your own environment locally is a huge sell for the Odin project and so that's why for me I'm actually going with the Odin project over free code camp and I've been really really happy with the decision that I've made thus far so let's say your learning style isn't really set up for text-based learning but you're actually looking for video resources and video courses that you can take to become a better programmer not to fear, I have some great video options for both JavaScript and React that I think are gonna help you as you get set up with these languages. If you're trying to learn JavaScript, I would highly recommend subscribing to one of Wes Boss's courses. He's got a ton of different things to choose from, and no matter what level you're at, you can probably find a course that's gonna fit what you're looking for. If you wanna learn the basics of JavaScript, he's got a very robust course that I've actually been through that I think is a great resource for getting started in JavaScript. If you wanna take it a step further and learn about beginner React things that you can do, he's got a course for people who wanna do that, and if you wanna go even further than that and learn a full stack React application, you can also do that within the West Boss ecosystem. Outside of that, he makes a great free course on YouTube called JavaScript 30, where every day for a month, he walks you through a specific exercise in JavaScript. And this has been a really good way for me to actually take what I'm learning through all the courses in JavaScript and apply them to a specific mini project that he kind of walks you through. It's a really good resource and I think highly, highly recommended for anyone that's getting started with JavaScript. The other great thing about West Boss is that he's actually a really good teacher and explains concepts really well. Sometimes if I'm struggling to learn something through the Odin project, I know that I can just go and watch a West Boss video on it and the way he explains it and describes it sometimes gets me over the hump and I can finally understand that concept that I may not understood by just reading a text-based article on it. And the benefit of having so many courses that you can take with them is that it kind of gets you used to that specific learning style. It's kind of similar to taking a class by one of your favorite professors in college. You know what to expect, you know the learning style, you know how they cater the content, and so when you move on to the next course by them, you know 
that it's gonna be good. That's kind of how I feel about West Boss and his courses and I've really enjoyed taking lots of them. Even though West Boss is a great teacher, I personally think that there are some cons to you know going into his system and learning through video-based courses to begin with. With any video-based course, a lot of them are set up as code-along videos. This essentially means that you get some starter files and then you watch someone program and then you kind of program with them and you can pause and go with them at your own pace. This is good, but sometimes it's a lot of hand-holding and when you're actually tasked with building your own project, you may not know what to do because you've never actually been put in that position to do something from scratch. You've always kind of been following someone along and coding along with them. This is actually the one thing that I really liked about the Odin project because they gave you an exercise or a project to do. They didn't really tell you all all the step-by-step -step methods to do it, but they gave you a general outline as to what your project had to do, and you kind of had to figure it out on your own. When you're doing a video course and you're coding along with someone, West Boss or whoever it may be, you're kind of losing that element and you're watching them code and then coding with them. This takes away the actual learning step of taking foundational concepts and putting them into practice, and so you almost have to have more discipline when you're doing these courses. Either you need to work on a project that's similar to what they're coding, if they're coding a to-do list app, maybe you need to make a recipe app, for example, Example, or what you need to do is the, you have to listen to the prompt that they give you and then pause the video and not watch them code and try to code on your own at first. It takes a lot of discipline to do this and that's why I find the Odin project a very useful resource because I don't even have that option to just watch someone. I have to code on my own and I can't just watch someone and know that the answer is right there in front of me. The other small detail about West Boss courses is that they're in his own style. So a lot of times the way he sets up his environment or actually wants to code is based on how he likes to code. This is just something to keep in mind because you may not like the exact way he codes and how he sets up his environment. And so by going through his video courses, you're gonna be exposed to a lot of that. And so you may have to work a little bit extra to find what style or what environment is most comfortable for you. If you don't wanna get into the West Boss ecosystem, the second course that I recommend is Harvard CS50, but the web development version. I know a lot of people out there recommend CS50, just the basic version. And I've made a video about that why I think it may not be the best resource for some people, even though it's a very, very good course and taught really well. But I have been exposed to the web development course and I briefly started taking it, but then stopped. And the reason being is I really like the teaching style and I like the projects because they really put you through the paces. It really teaches you exactly what a specific language is doing and how to incorporate specific concepts and then forces you to do a pretty difficult project to put those concepts into practice and actually apply them. However, I, the reason I stopped doing Harvard CS50 web development is that it's focused on Django and some JavaScript, but the primary language is Django that they're using to build for their front end and back end and some JavaScript for, sprinkled in and it does mention React a little bit. For me, I'm specifically trying to focus more on JavaScript and React. And so that's why I wanted to use different resources such as West Boss's course in order to actually focus on those languages more. If you don't really care and you're okay learning Django as a framework, which I think is really useful because it also exposes you to Python, then I think this is a really good resource uh, for anybody trying to learn web development. However, if you wanna to try to get more into the JavaScript React ecosystem, I think the West Boss courses do a little bit of a better job at specifically focusing on those tracks. The other thing that I'll say about Harvard CS50 is that because it's a college level course, it is a significant significantly larger time investment than some of the West Boss courses. This can be good or bad because it actually forces you to do the work, which is important. And so if you have the time and the space to do that, then I would highly recommend it. However, if you wanna get a taste of what it's like to actually go through these courses, the West Boss courses, I think for me, have been a little bit shorter. And then you're able to kind of do projects on your own where you may have to do a little bit more digging, whereas the Harvard course kind of spoon feeds that to you and gives you a project that you can do, but it takes longer time. So it really depends on how you're learning but that's just something that I wanted to mention to all of you. The next course is more focused on React specifically. So let's say you have a foundations in JavaScript and you wanna get more into the weeds of React and how it actually works. I'm gonna link a Udemy course in the description that I think does a great job of teaching the basics of React and how everything works from you know just setting up specific components to how states work and re different React hooks. Um, I think that this is a very specific course for a very specific task, which is learning the ins and outs of React. And that's why I really enjoyed it. On top of that, it does have other things added to it, such as Redux. Uh, for me personally, I didn't think I needed to actually learn Redux, so I just kind of skipped that part of the course, and I focused on the part of the course that I thought was really useful, which was actually getting started with React itself. The only con that I'll say about this course is just like any other video course, it's a code-along course, and so it's a lot of watching someone else code, so you really have to be disciplined and either pause 
pause the video and try to code on your own or take the concepts that you learn from them and actually apply them to your own project. This is what I actually did. And so right after I took that React course, I used my learning of React to then make a specific you know, web page, a blog, whatever it may be, to uh, actually utilize what I just learned and put it into practice to solidify that learning. Because you don't really wanna get stuck in a position where you're just watching someone code for four hours and then you're not actually using what they teach you to actually build something. The last course that I'm gonna mention here today is actually something that teaches Next.js, which is something that kind of sits on top of React almost and makes some of the things in React a little bit easier, such as routing. So the course that I'm gonna talk about is a course about someone named Maximilian Schwartz. And if you're familiar with programming courses, you've definitely heard this name because he has a ton of gems out there. And I think his Next.js course was a really helpful intro and guide to actually getting started with Next.js once I had the foundations of React taken care of. Maximilian Schwartz, just like Wes Boss, is a great teacher. And just like any great teacher, you're gonna get used to his teaching style and the way he formats his content. So if you do wanna take further courses by him, it's gonna get you really used to the way he teaches. And I think he does a really, really phenomenal job of explaining key concepts and breaks them down in a way that are digestible, not only so that you understand them, but that's so that you can take them away from his class and apply them to your own projects. The big downside with this Next.js course and probably most Next.js courses out there right now is that the new version of Next.js, Next.js 13, I believe just came out. And so a lot of these courses are gonna be outdated with the newest stuff that's included uh, in the new update. And so that's just something to keep in mind because I'm sure either people will refresh these courses and add additional modules that go over the new features that are available in Next.js, or you may find a lot of new courses come up now that there is a new version of Next.js available. So I still think it does a great job of teaching you the basics of Next.js to get started with it, but just keep in mind that it's not gonna have all the newest updates that have just recently come out, but those may be added in the future. So those are all the courses that I think are useful in using and learning from when you're learning JavaScript, React, and Next.js. The way I would kind of go about this is to first figure out the type of learner that you are and what your learning style is. If you're someone that really likes reading and enjoys text-based tutorials, then going down the Odin Project or Free Code Camp route may be the best for you. However, if you're someone that learns from video and watching someone explain things on camera, then it may be better to actually choose a video course like the West Boss courses and get into that ecosystem to learn from them. For me personally, I've kind of done a hybrid of things. I'm using the Odin Project as my primary resource and going through the text-based tutorials. However, there are some days when reading a lot of text is just too much. So what I'll do on those days is whatever I'm learning in the Odin project, I'll go and find that topic in the West Boss videos that I already have and I've subscribed to, and I'll learn from his videos on that specific topic. And then I'll actually go back and do the projects in the Odin project to apply my learning. And that's been a really good way to keep things fresh because what you don't want is you don't want things to become stale and you don't want the experience of learning to code become boring because that makes you not want to code. And that's the ultimate goal in the end. So for me, it's a balance of doing both text-based and video-based courses courses, but always trying to take whatever I learn and apply it to a project. That's kind of the bottom foundational goal that I've kept for myself is that I don't want to just code along and make things. I want to make things on my own and use concepts. And that involves a lot of Googling, a lot of figuring out what's going on and what's breaking, but that's the way that I learn best. And that's the way that I think is going to make me a better programmer. So hopefully this was a helpful video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any tips or resources about courses that you think are great, I would love to hear those as well. I'm very open to this. For me, I've always tried to just pick out one or two courses that I think are gonna help me with a specific topic and not get stuck in just taking course after course or tutorial hell as I like to call it. So this is kind of the way that I've put that together. Hopefully this was useful. If you wanna hear more about learning how to code or if you wanna watch my review on the Odin Project, you can check that out here and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.